Genesis chapter the first time that we see in scripture that men on the face of the earth decided to reach out to heaven for reinforcement for support for influence I uh, was in the book of Genesis chapter 5 but the first time we see a very good exposition of such a concept the concept of priesthood we see that in Genesis chapter 8 I'd like us to look at that passage it lays out the very concept of priesthood and how that earth is expected to partner with heaven earth is expected to give heaven permission for interference Genesis chapter 8 verse 20 is my emphasis Maybe before the reading, or okay, after the reading. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast, and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savour, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth and neither will I again smite any more every living thing as I have done 22 which is a very common scripture while the earth remaineth seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not see now look at verse 22 again if we still remember elementary geography what is responsible for seed time and harvest what is responsible for cold and heat what is responsible for summer and winter just elementary geography who, who can come to our rescue? Elementary geography. What is responsible for that? All right. Yes, elementary geography. Not revelation. It's not a revelation. It's just geography. Times and seasons. No. Elementary geography. What is responsible for those three, three parameters? cold and heat summer and winter seed time and harvest please please be, be quiet be quiet you see when we don't let's listen to someone that is about to respond priesthood is priesthood is critical priesthood is deep so let's try to understand it Day and night is... No, leave theoretic. day and night. I'm, okay. I'm not asking about day and night. The three constants that I spoke about, they run on the same principle. Day and night has an exclusive principle. So there are two things that are at work there. All right. Okay. Summer and winter. Summer and winter, cold and heat, seed time and harvest. It hangs on one principle. What makes those things possible? The revolution of the earth. The revolution of the earth around the sun around is what sun. creates those, poten those possibilities. And then the rotation of the earth around this axis is what creates day and night. Please don't forget that. Uh, if I press further, are, are you with me? You are not with me? Okay, we'll talk about that when we come to intercession. Those two things that have been raised are critical for us to remember and reckon with if we are talking about establishing priesthood in a particular territory sometime in the now we are going to do a lot of praying tonight i just want to 
share with us the experience I had, the encounter I had, that led to the emphasis or the theme for our conference this year, the prayer ministry of the church. Hallelujah. You see, the church is about to lose her relevance. The church is about to lose her place in the scheme of things. Those days when there was crisis in the, in the nation, a prophet was sought for. It's not as if the kings wanted to submit to those prophets. But they were caught up in circumstances that were orchestrated from the realm of the spirit. So they needed technocrats that understood how spiritual things work out. So the prophet had a seat in the running of state affairs most often that seat was not occupied until times of crisis and then suddenly the, the prophet comes with wisdom as to how the activities orchestrated from the spirit can be overturned the church had a voice the prophets had a place but today we seem to be running a system that has not found the relevance of the church. Hallelujah. The church is begging for relevance. Believers are begging to be part of the scheme of things. That's an aberration of the order. It means there is something we have missed that is responsible for our relevance in the scheme of things intellectuals, philosophers, people of repute sent to Jesus. Even the Greeks came to consult him. There is no way our spirituality can be accurate and it doesn't have the capacity and the stature of influence in society. There is no way. If we are beginning to lose relevance, it means we are lacking contact with the vital matters that are responsible for our influence, our coverage, and our reach. Hallelujah. Now, the scripture I just read to us. Please don't mind the children, they're just having fun. When we start praying now, the Holy Ghost will come on them. Hallelujah. The scripture that I read... It's the first time we see a man practice priesthood clearly, with clear intentions, with an understanding of a response. He knew what to do to get God's attention. At this time, there was a chaotic event, such as had never happened before. The fountain of the great deep was broken. The windows of heaven were open. Floods came down the earth. Lasted for about 40 days. Took many other days in order for soil, land to appear. So that normal life can start again. There was a lot, a lot of uncertainty that found expression in the environment of this scenario. And it came to pass when Noah found safe landing after many days of traveling on water. He knew that one thing was sure. And what he was sure of was the fact that if God could destroy the world once, then he could destroy it again. And so he had to come to God. He had to approach God in a negotiation. That was the reason for the priesthood that is set up. The negotiation was to engage God. Now, let's look at the let's check the coordinates that are available to us in this scripture. First of all, the Bible says he built an altar unto the Lord. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this is the first time an altar is erected 
unto the Lord. There were other altars that were erected to other things, but this is the first time we're seeing it in scripture that a man erects an altar unto the Lord. I want to connect with heaven. I need to understand the position of heaven as touching the uncertainties that currently befall the earth. The Bible revealed that he did what? He erected. Now, you will notice that what he is doing here is very conscious. He erected an altar unto the Lord. Okay. Having erected the altar, I would like us to see the kind of sacrifice that he brought before the altar. You might read this scripture, read the sequence of scriptures that we have looked upon just now and you might say we are not sure of his prayer point his prayer point was not obvious no his prayer point is in form of metaphors prayer point is very clear now let's check his prayer point and understand his motive and Noah builded an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. What is a clean beast? What is a clean fowl? For instance, according to the law of Moses, because at this time the law of Moses had not yet come. It is in the law of Moses that the elaborate prescription of what was clean and what was unclean was spelled out. So by which creed is this guy classifying the creatures to be either clean or unclean? I don't want to go into that. It's a lot of theological trouble. For instance, according to the law of Moses, a dog is unclean. And Moses, through revelation and penetration into the wisdom that is in the spirit realm, was able to unveil to us the nature of certain creatures that make them unclean. <laughs> Are you with me? Like a pig is unclean. A dog is unclean. So you say animals that have hooves. Like a cow that walks on hooves. Say so those ones are clean. You say a dog that has something. Uh, what, what do they call that kind of feet? It's a webbed feet. That creature is not clean. What exactly is the philosophy behind clean and unclean you will know that after the fall are you with me after the fall something critical happened according to the book of psalms 82 verse 4 and 5 the bible says they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Now, the implication of the fall was that it altered the foundations. That word foundations in its rendering and from the linguistic perspective refers to the principles of operation or what we call a manual in our current time. So the implication, the direct implication of the fall was that the operating system the manual from whence creatures were supposed to find their purpose find the reason why god had created them and how they were expected to function that manual was withdrawn on the account of the fall so a mighty distortion took place to the visible creation on the account of that fall are you with me for instance, mosquito. 
Mosquito was not created to bite people. But when the man was withdrawn, mosquito now became compatible with blood. Every clean creature, clean creatures are creatures that were not affected by the fall. They still maintain their lot in the context of the original manual. Are you with me? Oh my, you are not here. I hope you know. Please walk with me. Walk with me. I hope you know according to the prescription for man. Because the design for man is that he was to be created in the image of God. And after the likeness of God. Are you with me? Hmm. As I was teaching in Bible school today. What image is. I told them that. I, I asked the class if they had seen a hand glove before. Because a hand glove was manufactured in the image of a hand. Because the purpose of the glove is that one day it will play host to a hand. And so man was created in the image of God because the idea and the intention is that someday, sometime, God is expecting man to play host to him. It is the image of God that gives us the capacity and the potential to be able to contact God, contain God, and express God. That's what the image of God has given us the capacity to become. Are you with me? Now, see, that is to say, according to the creation architecture, man, man is supposed to function by the power of another, in the image of another, in the likeness of another. So man was not created to operate like man. He was created to operate like God. But when the fall came, the possibility of man operating like God was no longer in view. That means the operating system, the manual was what? Now, so he's going to function after another philosophy entirely that was different from, so you get this, one, different from what God intended originally. And so this guy, before he... Now, there was a lot of revelation in this sacrifice. Because even before the law came to spell out what was clean and what was unclean, this man knew by revelation. And the Bible says that what did he offer? He offered what? Clean creatures, clean beasts, clean birds. He was informed of the fact that the fall had set in. And many things have taken on another purpose, another agenda, another outlook. That only the clean creatures retain their original purpose, capacity, and mission. Alright? And unfortunately, because if I were him, I wouldn't have done what he did. Because in my own opinion, we were not informed that Noah took extra animals. Is that in your Bible? We're not informed. And if it was going to take clean creatures for sacrifice, it means that there were several species of animals that we never got to see because Noah had to sacrifice them. Now, so Noah kept them for 40 days and 40 nights only for him to come out and what? If what he wanted to do was not so important as to make the line of several creatures extinct, eh? if his priesthood was not so important, there would have been no need for him to do that. But what exactly was his prayer? What exactly was his intercession? Because what he was praying was that, see, Lord, God of the heavens, I don't know what you did that these creatures were not affected by the fall, but I offered them to you. Now the earth is a victim of the fall. The foundations of the earth are distorted. The foundations, just like the foundations of Benway. We thought that, okay, maybe upon the election of a Christian governor, suddenly the land will rise out of obscurity. The land will become that warrior that it was intended to be. The grace of God will suddenly break out. And the thief nation, the domination nation that has been asleep, will begin to lead the other states to the Lord. And so this nation will be able to rise and take on 
her full apostolic stature as a nursery where God comes to test run his experiments before he exports it to the nations of the earth. I thought that we would be leading other states in godliness because of the results that are finding expression, because of the economy that is working out, because of things that are finding expression according to the will of God. You become obvious that God is our king here. Yeah. I thought it would happen. <laughs> ah, but you see, uh, when you become a governor after the fall, hey, then you need to introduce priesthood. <laughs> <laughs> when 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 a mighty dark colossus like Suswan is the one that left the seat before you are coming to occupy it if the fall has taken place oh in his God. full temper in his full capacity only God knows how, even in that government house how many virgins were buried how many people were buried how many pregnant women were buried and you know, my village, I still remember how to go there. My people are necromancers. In witchcraft, they keep people and blood spills on the ground. But in necromancy, they bury them and alive. And the, the, the level of demons, the number of demons, the kind of demons that are summoned when a human being is buried alive and he dies, he suffocates and dies underground. Uh, let's not go there. Let's not go there. Let's do it. Let's do it. What happens when you do that kind of stuff is that you, you have raised a mast. What we call a mast. On the strength of that infrastructure, many covens can live off that mast. Many, many, many kinds of sorceries and magic. They have a convenient network to operate. Especially if the number of the people that were buried was after <laughs> the requirement of the mystery of necromancy and then you come to become a governor after the fall and when you come you rush and sit down instead of you to slaughter one of the clean creatures you didn't present anything <laughs> please help me tell your neighbor it's not by power it's not by mind only by the spirit of god this man considered everything and he saw that it was falling there was no prospect left there was no destiny left in fact there was no guarantee that life can be supported that was not a good way to start so he started by jeopardizing the family tree of some creatures say this one was not affected by the fall and i don't know why this was not affected this bed was not affected and he gathered them and he erected an altar to the lord and what he was saying by the kind of creatures that he offered was that <laughs> god of heaven i don't know what you did to these creatures that the fall did not affect them I'm sacrificing them to you so that you will reveal to us how life can be stabilized in this falling world so that there will be uh, we we can be assured of a future we can be assured of set possibilities are you with me you're not with me intercession can create a way where there is no way and I assure you right now there is no way in this land. There's no way. Forget about what they. Sometimes it's better not to even listen to news. I trust my visions that I see in my bedroom much more. The news is a lie. It's a lie. Kai. It's a lie. <laughs> the intercessor is that infrastructure that creates a possibility, a working system. It creates a pathway for the creation of new life, new possibilities, new realities. He negotiated with God and said, I don't know what you are going to do. Yes, the fall is in view, but you need to guarantee 
that <laughs> life on earth can be such as we still be within the context of purpose as you ordained it from heaven. And then the Bible says that God smelled the offering. That means what he did ascended to heaven. He, his priesthood got to heaven. Now, you are not with me. You are not with me. Let me tell you something. This man, there was nobody that did this thing that this man saw. And he copied. And No, he didn't, he didn't see. This man was operating purely by revelation. You might have seen the landscape of your family and you just discovered that before I showed up, there was a fall here. There was a fall. You don't deal with the fall by coming and speaking English. A lot of lingo. I want to tell you that just because you came physically is not a proof that there is any solution. Your physical appearance cannot change something that has already been programmed from the realm of the spirit to fall, to fail. It takes priesthood to reverse that trend. And if the church of Jesus at this critical point in time does not return back to priesthood, we will lack the ability to create a way, a passageway, a navigation way in this time where there is no way. And we would have lost out of the game. The fear that we will lose relevance will become established. Hallelujah. A fall. What do you expect? My grandfather being one of the most enlightened sorcerers in, in that jungle. He was very enlightened, very educated in the way of darkness. And he did that, and his own father did that, and they did all kinds of stuff. I heard that they could heal all kinds of diseases. But you will still die, but you won't die that time. Mm. They had power to make a dead man speak and to reveal who killed him before he dies again. You know, so before we came up, there was a fall. The foundations were out of course. And when the foundations are tampered with, it means the delicate balance upon which grace and truth was supposed to rest as cracked. Only technocrats can walk at that time and change the variables through priesthood. Place was rigged. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. I remember in those days in Nazi, those days we used to we had Nazi one, Nazi two, those, those days. You know, Nazi one, Nazi two. Before my brain was as sharp as a blade. Those days, so sharp that I didn't do class three, Nazi one, Nazi two, class one, two, mm, four. From four, I wanted to go to from one. Ah, my father said, if you run like this. Life itself, we run and leave you. <laughs> now, I had a belief. My belief was that if there are human beings in the class, I'll be better than them. That was my belief. I don't know by what means I stumbled on that belief, but I had that belief. All right? Now, when I got to the university, it became worse. My mental capacity became worse than what it was. That is worse as per more terrible. And I discovered one day that I could just cram the whole textbook. I didn't know that before. So the handouts that they gave us that I crammed, except you can fail your handout, you can't fail. It. But I remember in 300 level, when some spirits, evil spirits, I will cram like that and they will touch my head like this. And the thing will. Now, it was not because the brain was no longer working. It was because the foundation, the foundation was out of course. Because there was a fall. And you want to stand on the fall and have a predictable life, the fall insists that there should be no predictability in your life. That the outcomes of your life will be determined by the fall. Except a technocrat rises 
and knows what to take to the creator so that he can he can amend the constitution and add a clause that creates a possibility for continuing strange things began to take place Sometimes when you are in the class and you are teaching and you want to ask a question, before you finish asking it, I know where you are going, so I answer you before you. I answer. You, I will tell you the answer before you finish. And then sometimes people say, okay, I'm a cut that I read the mind. It, the brain goes, I don't know the brain, the brain. But what, what, what happened? Have you ever, oh, you have not gone on a boat before? We go to work on a boat. So when you are jumping from the rope to speedboat, they'll say, don't jump like this. Because if you jump like this, there will be a problem. Jump, open your leg, and you land. When you land, tap the side of the boat so that we will not all of you. <laughs> you know why? The foundations are not reliable. So you too need to change the way you walk. You change to... <laughs> Something are taking place that are changed the price tag. So we don't know what to expect in the days to come. This man decided to advance and to chart the course of life by priesthood. Jesus. Have you not heard those threats from the coven that you will never marry? Those are not empty threats. Those are foundation realities. Foundation realities that they are saying no matter how you start, this is how you will end. You will end childless. You will end It will take priesthood to overrule that law. Even if there needs to be an amendment. Technocrats in the spirit know how to secure it. That was what Noah revealed. Oh, heaven responded. I, I, have you realized that the, the monks, the monks is not a place of worship. It's just a place of prayer. The monks is a prayer house. The first thing you do after you become a Muslim, is to learn how to pray. It's a prayer house. It's a law enforcement area. And then hire people who understand how to mix the satanic verses and sorcery, know how to use it to curse. Those ones do it during times of alignment, from 12 midnight to 2 a.m. Why? What are they doing? They are trying to enforce the fall, to take a bitter effect on your life. It is already, they are cooperating with the fall. You see, they are swinging along the tide, so it's easier. You are not with me. I, I mean, okay, you guys grew up in the town. In my according. They make me. You have not swam before. It's easier to swim along with the tide. So the guy that is practicing witchcraft, is in is in alignment with the fall the elements submit to him they submit to her the water submits the sun the stars they submit because of the fall hallelujah so the person begins enchantment begins incantation and then suddenly the powers of creation align with such a person because to bring an assault, a bitter assault on a particular human being. And that one does not understand that in order for you to swim, I was, I stood on the highest tank in Lagos. I mean, petrol depot, depot, the highest tank. It's in satellite. It's high into the heavens. When you climb beaches, uh, how many steps? About 335 steps. Like this. Keep going. Just don't stop. Just. There's no place to stop, so. <laughs> By telling you, and when you arrive there, don't, don't breathe like this. <gasps> uh -uh, no, you'll be taking in for gas. Yeah, oh. I, I, I came back from Lagos strong. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Then I go, when I got up there, and I saw serious wind started blowing. I almost fell off. Then I look for her to, you know, you spread your legs so that you have some balance. Then I saw a bird trying to navigate, and the wind stopped that bird. 
because the bed wanted to fly against the tide the bed was still for 15 minutes i was watching that side was still and the wind refused to give up and then eventually it was the bed that gave up and god began to use it to teach me that's why i say you should come first so that i will teach you when machinery and witchcraft begin to operate you see the fall supports them so they are aligned with it so it's easier for them you want to flow against the tide and you don't have basic capacity for consistency don't do that business look for something else to do the bed was there for 15 minutes i saw it but it lost even though his feathers and wings were given to it by god it, it, it could not so there are some times when you are going against the tide you're on one spot it's not as if you there's no effort what you don't understand is if you stop flapping the wings where will you go it will go the way of the prediction of witchcraft and then it will look as if which witches are more accurate prophets than believers there is a call back to our parent function as people of god i saw that bed the bed could not survive the wind hallelujah now so when he finished the sacrifice and he offered it to god what was the implication i'd like us to see the response of heaven god had to amend the constitution god had to add something that did not exist before in order to create a pathway for the petition that has risen to his courts and to his chambers in the heavens of god notice that when the constitution was amended god did not make a public proclamation oh my are you with me no you are not you are not today we are going to fly against the current against the current now have you ever prayed before and the prayer was dry how many of you have asked? i know okay i know your own prayer anytime you come here you are gliding <laughs> you are just moving like that soaring many times when you really start praying and when your prayer is confronting something a pattern that has been set in motion something that has been fixed by tokens by covenants and truces in the spirit when you are coming against it it's as if there's there's no support that's when your prayer is most effective you are striking at the heart of the real thing that's when you are striking it so people that are checking out too easily never get anything done never it takes a stubborn a radical it takes a rebel against the devil to see the other side of the sun i watched that bed the bed kept doing this but you see the the force that was coming was equivalent to his so it was as if he was stagnant and i now discovered why many christians they are doing like this and they are wondering why they are stagnant they don't know that if they stop doing like this the prediction will come to pass and just if just in case they were able to do like this enough for three more minutes maybe the intensity of the wind would have waned and they would have secured the passage and you see in the spirit when that shaft is broken eh, and somebody flies in that direction that's the first flight in 1000 years it will be your life that will determine the next limit for the family but you will not know that that was your day that you were supposed to expand yourself and do what has not been done in 1000 years you will now do small and say i win <laughs> when last did you rebel against the devil some of us are alive today because we rebel mureke sanamon I said, I saw Satan. They sent Satan to me. I saw Satan. After fighting for 12 years, Satan turned backwards. Satan, the one you read about in the Bible, he turned backwards. Satan can turn back. Even a beast can beg. The way Susan ruled, who thought his name would be blotted out like this? Ah. And let me tell you something communism was stronger than Islam yes 
it was stronger than Islam. It controlled the state. It controlled everything. It was on the throne. It was, it was, it was, it was a, a type of rulership. It was government. It fell. When men like Noah arise, a way is made where there seemed to be nowhere. It fell and it crumbled. Who told you that Islam cannot fall? It's weaker than what the church has contended and won before. But you see, it happens to be that this demon is our demon. It's the demon that is in our own generation. Our fathers brought communism down. We must see Islam come down so that in our old age, let it be that we'll tell the story to our children. There was once a caliphate, a seat of power, an image of jealousy that was raised and lifted in the land. We saw its end. May you have that strength to see the day where the wind will wane in the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 21, before we begin to pray. And the Lord smelled the sweet savour, and the Lord said in his heart, you see, I was expecting that now that the, con the constitution is to be amended, that a proclamation will be made. Where was the utterance that was released? Where? In his heart. I thought that God will make a public proclamation. Now the basis upon which your life will be, will be established is different. I'll, make some, I'll keep some variables constant. So that if you know how to deal with these variables, you'll be able to determine what is to come. Irrespective of Satan. Irrespective of the fall. Now, let's go back to the variables. Seed time and harvest. Summer and winter. Cold and heat. Day and night. Is that not so? He said, I'm going to hold those constant. They will always come and they will always go. I'll make them constant. If you know how to deal properly with this this constant your life will be predictable and among all the constants there's only one of the constants that you can influence which is seed time and harvest now i don't have time because i would have shown you you know i divided those constants three is to one okay you can rise i pray better when there's sound i see better we need all the sight we can get so that when the way is made in the wilderness, we'll be able to see it. When rivers are released into the desert places, we'll be able to identify it. When the rock begins to give a drink of life, we should be able to trace it. We need all the vision we can find from the Lord right now. Because as we offer unto him this sacrifice, it's going to be with a response, an escalating response that will set the stage and determine the variables by which possibilities will abound. If you check those four variables, there is only one that you can influence. That's seed time and harvest. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. But, unfortunately, when you trace the principle of sowing and reaping to the New Testament, there are only two options of how you can sow. Are you with me? I didn't have time, I don't have enough time to show you to trace that principle until we get to the New Testament. But when you sow do, you will find out that the only two options of where you can sow, you can either sow into the spirit or you can sow into the flesh and the bible reveals that him that sows into the spirit of the spirit he shall reap life and he that sows into the flesh of the flesh he shall reap destruction corruption we are going to spend the next one hour we are going against the tide 
I will insist that the fall will not stand. Even if it would take an amendment of the constitution. Even if God would decide not to proclaim the result of our priesthood, that it will be hidden in his heart. Something that kings will need to seek to find. Because the Bible says that it is the, the honor of the Lord to conceal the matter. The honor of kings to search it out. So as God spoke it in his heart, it means we we'll still need to do some searching to find out the new legislation that has been released. Oh, but I know you have been contending with so many things and all of that. You are like that bed that I saw. If for any reason you get to a point where you are frustrated, the death of an intercessor, the death, the day an intercessor is destroyed is the day you become tired. I am tired. When you start engaging things in the great deep, make sure that is your lifestyle throughout your pilgrimage. There was nothing the devil didn't do to shut my prayer life down in Lagos. I knew he wanted to kill me. I knew. Death was looking for me. <laughs> ah! There was a mistake I made many years ago. I have not forgotten that mistake. He still prayed. I prayed and I saw that God answered. That was all I needed. Even if I'm sick. Eh? And the sickness does not affect the mouth. Oh. Marakomene. Kurata lakala bakapa. I read the books of great men that held God. They were able to handle things that were not visible. And this was a common denominator that I discovered. They fasted often. And they prayed much. That was enough for me. An entire reading of a book, that was what I got. Fast often. Pray much. Fast often. Do what? Pray much. And I decided to pray deliberately. You know, some of you pray when the Holy Ghost moves you. That's good. But you must learn how to pray when you are not moved. That is better. You pray intentionally. You pray deliberately. This priesthood, this act of priesthood in the book of Genesis chapter 8 was intentional. Because it, it required building an altar. Eh? Do you build a house in your sleep? You are sleeping and, and then you wake up. It was intentional. And I decided to fast. And I decided to pray. And I started praying. And I started praying. And I started praying. It was not easy. But you see, prayer is a spirit. When you start praying, what you are doing is that you are calling the spirit. That spirit will possess you one day. When it possesses you, it becomes natural for you to pray. Just like it's natural for you to talk, but it's not natural for you to pray. It is supernatural. To talk to a spirit, you need to be strengthened in your spirit. That's why whenever you want to pray, you find yourself. You see who I'm talking to? You find yourself in the night. You are overwhelmed with great sleep. <laughs> ah, my prayer place was a football feet in canon every night they will see me walking in the on the football pitch sometimes i would like this, i will lie down i did that for many months hallelujah one day we now went i went for my other brother's wedding so from there a pastor came and met me and said ah, he wants to go and see one man of god i said what happened see the man of god He's hearing things about the man of God he doesn't like. Let's go and advise him. I said, that's not my calling. He said, the man of God was his best man in his wedding. He's very tight. Let's go there. Me, I'm the teacher. I can bring out scriptures and maybe he'll be convinced and he will stop some things. At now, when this man of God is a prophet, prophesies a lot. We now start in the parlor. The man of God now came came from his room meanwhile that time he was still a genuine prophet anyway but now uh, you know the holy ghost does not move because he wants him to move he moves because he wants to move he moves because he wants to do what he wants to do 
and then suddenly people begin to expect you to perform and if you yield to that temptation uh, you just discover that there's a thin line between an accurate prophet and a false prophet the inspiration will still be coming but you will not be coming from god and people that are high in spirit will know that your source is not pure he came out of his room he shook me when he shook me shout and he began to speak in tongues spoke in tongues spoke in tongues then he began to prophesy I want to share that prophecy with you a part of it because it was true but it took that prophecy for me to know the effect of my prayer he shouted the first thing that he said was that because of the prayers you have been praying consistently you have broken many of the causes in your family now now so i needed that that one all right because i was praying for long and it was as if i wasn't getting feedback god was not showing me anything i was not hearing anything was i really laboring then i realized when that prophecy came that the best days of my prayer was the time that it was as if god did not know no feedback uh, and i learned that's okay intentional prayer is powerful there may be no wind the prophet said there may be no cloud the prophet said but the ditches shall be filled with water When he said that, he said, Ah, your prayers have cut through the causes, cut through the causes. Your family is coming out because of the prayers you have been praying consistently. Let's stop there. I won't take you into that prophecy. But I know because of my sake, the prophetic grace came upon him. Meanwhile, if a prophet comes out of his room and he has prophesied to you, you that came to help him, will you now say, Let's do Bible study again? So after he prophesied, we'll say, Okay, <laughs> we're done. has prophesied <laughs> but I regret that we left that day without engaging that young man that would have been an opportunity to save Nigeria's prophet because at that tender age that he was prophesying like that governors were visiting him all kinds of people were coming to him and they spoiled him with money then he became a soothsayer now a magician and he's good at magic you know you need to be a prophet first before you can be an ASMO. oh you are, you are not aware of that okay let's stop there i won't go for that i won't go for that. he said the prayers had cut through the courses i said oh glory that the prayers are pierced to damage so many installations Is good. Many of us don't fly long enough. Till the time where the wind and the energy begins to wane. So I said, okay, so I'm doing good. I went back to Kano again and then I I dusted my trousers. I said, here we go. That prophecy renewed my strength. And I began to pray intentionally intentional pray intentional pray intentional you know what came back first that sharp brain but god now said you will not use it to get phd use it for my bible for the world i preach many times genesis to revelation comes to my brain i don't need to open the bible to show you a reference i can quote it He said, you use it in the Bible. I did not give you for a carnal use. I gave you for what? Do you know how many of your stuff has been kept? How many of your things are no longer available to you? How many of the ordinations that God has released that have not reached you? And the prince walks on foot. My servants ride on horseback. We are going to pray tonight. I would like you to sustain the temple of the prayer because we are praying the prayer of Noah.
make a way where there seems to be no way. Cause rivers to flow to the desert. Let there be a highway in the wilderness. Since Adam, I was the first preacher, first preacher in my family line. The first preacher that has preached on this scale. Many, some rose and that they fall, they fall, they fall. The first preacher that survived. In my mother's family, my father's family. First. God will make your own way for you. Maybe, maybe when you check, you didn't see any way for yourself. Don't worry. Priesthood can create a way where there seems to be no. We were praying those days before my transfer. We were praying. We saw a bulldozer in Makoti. You remember those? Baby. It is now I'm understanding. I'm understanding that God is saying that if we don't create the way, there will be no way through the land. I thought some big anointing will come and create a way for us. I, then I just realized. That it is our responsibility to so if anybody said you will not marry that's a legislation we will create the way for you we are going to pray to them and in our prayer we want to rebel against the laws the verdict the judgment of the devil we are going to rebel against the law of gravity that which makes things go down is a fall it makes everything fall so that no man has a capacity to stand in right it makes everyone bow down held under siege come on Shortly after my father died, because my father was the one that came and told my grandfather that when you die, no one will practice witchcraft again to the end of time in this family. So, but we will not force you to change. But what you are doing will die with you. It will, it will lose memory. It will lose essence. Even your name will die with it. Those were the words he used to tell him. One day they led him to Christ. After they led him to Christ, one month later, they shot him, they struck him. And he went to rest. And when his wife, my grandmother, saw that he was dead, she died too. So they died on the same day. He died at 1, 120. She died at 109. And do you realize that those are the oldest people since that day the rest die at 60. my dad 62 my uncle 64. how did they live to 120. i hope you know that that's the fall it's a fall no you can create the pathway my god my god my god it's not a, a 62 year old man is young The other of my uncle was about 54. And you see, they fall. You know, they fall. He's falling. Everything's falling. He's just going. He's falling. And then very soon, you begin to see 30, 32, 25. Is what is. There's a fall. Until a priest will come and bring a clean creature. The question is are you the one who is to come? Or should we expect another? Should we wait for your son, your daughter? Yes, I know the many stories you can tell about the things that don't work in your family. That's what is happening everywhere. Your own is not different. But a priesthood comes to create a way where they seem to be known. Just in case they say no one among you can be great. That's a legislation that came from the covenant. It has the support of the gradient of the fall. But you see, there's something stronger 
than that which sin has created. The name of it is called righteousness. Today you are going to rebel against Satan. And just in case you are here, and the spirit of supplication has not rested on you in a long while, because if it rests on you, you are able to defy sleep. You can plan to pray by two and the spirit of, of supplication will wake you up. Meanwhile, you have worked hard, but by two, the sleep will just, they, it will be paused because the spirit needs your attention. And then you not work based on the rudiments of, of this world, the elements of this world. Your life cannot be influenced because you are after the order of him that is called everlasting. I want you to rise on your feet. I don't know what limitations you have been forced to accept. But you are going to rebel against the devil. And we will maintain the temple of prayer until we see that the heavens open. And that the, there is an amendment to the constitution. I rebel. Maybe they said something. Maybe... Maybe you are experiencing something. There's an unwritten law that exists in your family. There's something happening in this state that God has not ordained. All we need is the priesthood of understanding. Men that will offer up sacrifice and retrieve, retrieve a verdict from God. Retrieve legislation from God. That is the assignment of the true church. Anana <laughs> Ena hande You can rebel against the devil. You can rebel against the devil. There is hope in your intercession. Your intercession is creating a pathway for an intervention.
That legislation from the kingdom of darkness that has placed a limitation on your life, that has placed a limitation on the church of Jesus in this land that has strangled the government of our day, that has made us fugitives in our own land. We reject it.
question here in the scripture. He said, who is he that speaketh? And it cometh to pass when the Lord has not spoken. It means there are some people that pride themselves in, in speaking. It's not the Lord speaking, but they speak. And they intend that that speaking will stand, will come to pass. But it's not the Lord that spoke. You see, witchcraft, necromancy, swims along the tide of the fall. So the elements lend themselves. Have they spoken? Have they said you will not go beyond this age? You will not marry? You will not? Ah. That utterance went out in a violation of his majesty. That utterance, that proclamation went out in the violation of the authority of the Most High. We want to invalidate every such utterance. You want to invalidate. You want to invalidate. We come to court tonight. We come to court tonight. It is not written. It is not established in the law of the law. So tonight, we bring that utterance to nothing. The Lord has not sanctioned it. The Lord has not ordained it. It was not from the mouth of the Lord. Who is he that speaketh? And it cometh to pass when God has not ordained it. Every utterance that was born in the chambers of darkness to regulate Benway State, I come to you today, O oh God. It did not come from you. I render it null and void. Who is he? Who is he that speaketh? Who is he that makes a proclamation? Who is he that speaketh without the authorization of God? We render it null and void. Even the council of Ahitophel. We turn it into madness tonight. So may the Lord arise and let his enemies scatter. Who is he? What is his rank? By what stature does he speak when the Lord has not ordained? Ayabosa 
I'm rest of a note about Haske, Rabato, and then a monoto, and so the Icaparatolia Mamarata. Who is he that speaks? On the God, there is none that you among the God. Unauthorized utterances, unauthorized verdicts, unauthorized proclamations, we bring them to naught. Let the council of Ayutthaya be turned back. Let 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 every utterance that went forth without the blessings of the Lord become nothing. Become nothing. We bring them down, 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 we bring them down. said that he will pour upon the house of Israel the spirit of supplication you see what we are talking about here is is a spirit it is that spirit that will wake you up by 2 a.m. after a very tedious day's job because the spirit is involved the Bible says in the book of Psalms 80 verse 18 it says quicken us and we shall call upon thy name except you have the help of a spirit you will not have the capacity to apply enough pressure to change the legislation can we ask god today for that spirit we want to be regulated by the spirit of supplication that spirit that spirit can move maybe early in the morning you someone you are you are in a place a high place and uh, fried chicken is served and 
rice is served and suddenly that spirit moves so it's not time it's, it's by a spirit can we ask that God will pour out upon Ben State the spirit of supplication the spirit of intercession that suddenly the voice of the land will begin to ascend to the courts of God we need the help of a spirit 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 send us help our strong men are weary our leaders are without perception the land plunges into darkness daily we ask for help for help send us help Kovani Sanamana Rekote Elon Brezike Da Kola Mahabadai Sabo And the Lord smelled a sweet savour. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. That was the utterance. I will not again. This man has forced the legislation out of heaven. That's the work of the church. We are supposed to storm the courtroom of heaven. And through priesthood, we receive legislations, amendments. That will create new possibilities for how things will be. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. We are rounding up now. But we will round up with the testimony. There is a woman that evil spirits used to appear to. And one day, three of them appeared to her. And they, they confirmed her death. That her death was settled. Somehow, she came in for one of our meetings. Through the operation of the gift of word of knowledge, we were able to discern that the spirit of death was hovering over the life of somebody. And when the ministration began, the Holy Spirit arrested the woman. In addition to other people that the Holy Spirit wanted to help. Now, What happened when she came was that there was a counter legislation. That even though there is a verdict over your head that has given instruction to demons to ensure the orchestration of your demise, there is a counter verdict that is coming from the highest court of heaven. That is the role. Of the church one of the reasons why we were created trapata having spirit soul and body it's because of prison through your spirit you can mount up and actually respond to summons in the court of heaven through your spirit you can carry out intercession that ascends that has the potential to ascend into the court of heaven and that intercession will appear in the court of heaven as a witness. Just like blood too has immortal properties. 
blood when shed can ascend to that court just like when abel's blood was shed it ascended to the court there was no lawyer that was there arguing for abel it was the blood that was doing the argument making the demands and putting pressure on the righteous nature of god to be just it was a demand on his justice system on his judgment and on his equity hallelujah the blood alone ascended there and the verdict was released there is one name god had he's called what the immutable no you have a remote control have you you can press mute that means don't talk but god is what immutable nobody can stop him from talking if through talking he created this universe satan knew that he could talk again what satan cannot stop is that god can speak again and the church is the infrastructure that is set here on earth to retrieve those verdicts from the mouth of god just like noah retrieve a verdict that conditioned the possibility and the pattern through which prospect can yet re be retained in the fallen world we need words from his mouth when paul was calling to ministry ananias the brother that was sent to pray for him to be delivered from his blindness and so that he can be filled with the holy ghost he went with strong words from jesus he said brother son <laughs> the lord jesus that appeared to you on the way to damascus is the one that sent me he has sent me to tell you that you have been chosen as a vessel that you will know his will that you will see the righteous one and that you will hear words from his mouth we are talking about words from his mouth that is what can change everything satan knows that words can come from his mouth every priesthood is set up to receive legislation from god thank you jesus listen to me there is somebody that walked into this place i'm seeing it clearly now you came here with the spirit of death but you see, as I spoke about words, there is a legislation. If I lie, you will know. There is a legislation. There is an utterance that has gone forth in the realm of the spirit that that verdict did not come from heaven. It's disallowed. You see, I am a law enforcement agent. It, is, it says, so you will hear words from this man. The immutable speaks today he speaks tomorrow and he speaks forever our function is to is to is to secure words from his mouth once those words are secure a new template upon which things will happen begins to find expression why words words i was there in the village when god spoke to me he said you will preach my gospel in the nations of the world i was just coming back from the stream it was in the stream i learned how to swim river niger oh, jesus there was nothing in the environment that suggested that this guy can leave this place and become anything but what did i receive words heaven and earth can pass away but those words they are immortal they are eternal it it can prosper it can wait until an appropriate season comes for it to find manifestation and expression and so if he needs to send anything he sends his words right from that place if i one day i was moved and i shared it with my brethren that god said i will preach in the nations because of that they hated me with passion you hatred came but you know what they did everything even my pastor when i told my pastor he laughed and he almost fell from his seat but when i went back to him he spoke what what he says so not a preacher will tell you this thing you have received the privilege from jesus to hear what was from his own mouth not from the mouth of an angel he said such is the privilege 
that you will have in the kingdom of God. Oh my. When a man that received word from his mouth arose, the result was two thirds of the New Testament. He became a colossus. An icon. Went back to Arabia to do honeymoon with Jesus. He was the only man that went for honeymoon after his salvation that I saw. You didn't go. When you gave your life to Christ, continued your own life. He went to Arabia for three and a half years for honeymoon. Came back a colossus. I don't have time to show you the nine things he saw in Arabia. So that when the things he spoke when Peter was old, Peter said the things brother Paul has said. They were difficult to understand. He had wars from him. He conferred with the mutable. Him that cannot be shut up. And the church is supposed to secure wars. Wars from his mouth. It came to pass in 2009. That was the first time I boarded an aircraft from Abuja to Lagos. I thought we would die before we got there. The turbulence was was much more than the one on Urukum roundabout. I thought it was my last day. When we were taking off, I said, oh God, <laughs> I didn't know it went here. It was from that point in Lagos, we waited till evening, about five hours for our flight. It was delayed. Straight. Outside this country. I, when I landed, I thought I had died. But you know what? Wars. When I entered the hotel room, Jesus that spoke to me in the village, he appeared to me in the room. I'm not saying an angel came. Jesus. I've seen him five times. And one of those times, he met me outside. And he said, if I told you about your international ministry in the village, you won't believe. So I came here to tell you that you are an apostle to the nations of the world. There are many nations I've never been to. My sermons on internet that they have picked you know believe how many nations want our presence in their midst even kenya some people started one minister and say we have started your ministry i said shut it down god has not spoken about kenya he has not spoken wars took a village born took him to the nations hallelujah when i landed in the meeting the first thing that happened was that the cripple walk that was it that was how the meeting started the boy's leg was twisted twisted like this when the, if the mother, it was not the boy they brought for prayer. The mother just carried the boy. That he, she the one that came for prayer. I said, no, they, what of this one? They twisted leg, twisted back. Because words went forth. He is immutable. I will wait on him until he speaks. If he has traveled, he will come back. But he must speak. Such is the way of the intercessor. He is persistent. Because he waits for what? For words. Now let's cast out that spirit of death. Let's cast it out. We're out of time. I wish we had one more hour. Allah mo salabakaya. Allah mo ni masiki. Keno masato. Words from his mouth. Anywhere you are, you can, you can speak in tongues for the next five minutes. As we invite him to come take away that which he has not planted. For every tree that my heavenly father has not planted shall be rooted out. Anything that God did not utter, that God, God did not begin. That which God did not start. That which God did not start. He will bring an end. Just in case you were told in the dream. That your days are numbered. I come with words. From him. That is the resurrection and the life. Who is he that speaketh. And it come to pass if the Lord God has not sanctioned.
words from his mouth. Hola mo saka bene kando samandela brasketo masika bere kapotema. You have been subjected to torment, torment that is not of God, torment that is not of God. But right now, right now, right now, God, God has come. The immutable is here tonight. Ruske de nakando sabarakata. illegal for someone to speak a thing expecting it to come to pass when it was not you that spoke it it's illegal for someone to take the seat of a judge and to declare a verdict over a life that they did not create it's illegal it's illegal for a man to proclaim limitations over the destinies of such that he has not manufactured and on the strength of this illegality father tonight we seek we seek that this illegality we seize in the lives of your people we are 
approach the court tonight because we know that you judge righteously with you is equity with you is justice with you is true judgment and father tonight i ask concerning that one that wears a cloak of death that walked into this place but unknown to him unknown to her she travels with a verdict he travels with a verdict and the transactions of death to secure an appointment with such a personality has been put in motion today father by the justice system that is righteous by the name that is all powerful by the spirit that is perfect we ask so oh god that that legislation that utterance we revoke it we repeal it in the name of jesus christ in the place where death was rooted tonight we write life we write life thank you father in jesus name